Today, I'm reviewing and testing this Brew Demon Conical Fermenter for you. Let's get started. So I often try lots of different fermenters, buckets, carboys, and things. And I saw this one on Amazon as I was perusing through. And I saw someone on Facebook actually asking, how good is this thing? Is it worth the money? This whole little fermentation vessel is about, it says $48, but I also had to pay for shipping. It cost me about 15 bucks to ship. So this is about 60-ish bucks for this fermenter. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. Oh, we got a little gift with our purchase. Interesting. They have some extra things from Brew Demon. That's the company. Another box. I think double box. All right. Here it is. It's a two gallon brewing system. Like I said, conical fermenter. So this means that we're gonna be able to hopefully do less racking because we are going to, uh, well, be able to avoid as much sediment. Looks like it's all in one, yeah. Got the main part of the fermenter here. It's plastic, of course, it's what makes it cheaper. It's got ports here for your airlock and a spout, looks like. Even more, another card, some assembly instructions. Down at the bottom of this box we have, looks like a base and some legs. All right, so inside is a little like plastic piece to cover your lid. The nice thing about this from what I understand, it has its own little airlock system so you don't really have to use an airlock from what it says. I'm gonna assemble this real fast. Okay, base is assembled. Okay, we have this, they call this on here the adjustable flow tap. Goes in there, I think. And you kinda have to turn it sideways. All right, we have that and lid. They do provide you with a small little bung if you wanna put this in here, but I'm more curious about this breathable situation or this venting plug, as they call it. It's just a little plastic, literally a plastic piece, but it has ridges, so I guess it... All right, so they say on here for venting plug, it says place vent plug in the hole at the top of the furniture, then sanitize and brew as normal. So I'm trusting that this is a true good situation. Like you can just leave that on top. This is a two gallon, although it says three. I'm confused. I got a, it says two gallon on the box, but then all the instructions here are for three gallons. So that's interesting. Okay, well, the best thing we can do here is put it to the test. So let's go ahead and brew with it. All right, we have tested the fermenter. We brewed in it. Basically what we did was I had made a large batch of hopped mead and I was running a different test. And so I put half of my hopped mead into a regular bucket and then part of it into here. The bucket side doesn't matter. I just was testing the fermenter side here. We didn't fill it all the way up. This is a three gallon fermenter. I kept, I kept saying like two gallons, but that's because the box said two gallons. It's a three gallon. You can tell because the side and has all that information here. But three gallon fermenter with the conical side, of course. I was very curious to see the results of this little like breathable cap thing. And essentially I didn't have to have a airlock on it at all. I just put this into the top here and I guess it helps it just breathe. Now I say this with a little bit lack of confidence because it looks like it's sealed here, which kind of sketches me out. So if I were, or when I brew with this thing, I'm probably gonna use the little bung they provide in the airlock and just do that. It's just a safer bet. There's no reason to worry about um, needing to, <laughs> to burp your, your brew or this thing possibly failing. So I could see this being useful if you were aging in here for some reason or done with fermentation and you just wanted to put that on there, but probably not gonna do that. The lid and everything is nice. I mean, this the, the construction side of this is great. What I really enjoyed was after that primary point, um, 
basically this this spout seals really well. I just racked with the tubing and all my stuff into my new container. And then when I got down to the bottom, I essentially just kind of tilted this over to where it kept all the sediment and stuff which had collected at the bottom. And I can show a little picture of that. All my yeast and stuff that I didn't want in the brew had settled here. So that was kind of nice. I did lose a little bit of mead specifically here. Of course, if you're doing like a wine or a beer or anything like that in this, you're gonna have probably sediment as well. So there are lots of pros to this thing, honestly. It is well made, it is a plastic fermenter. So it, I mean, it's pretty durable and it's like a nice plastic. So it's, it's meant to <laughs> take a beating, I think. The stain's actually not too bad. I was a little bit um, curious to see if it'd be nice. Lid and the fact that it's a wide mouth fermenter really helps to allow you to put fruit in there if you're doing stuff with fruit or large bags of stuff. Essentially, I can see myself using this for a lot of uh, bigger fruited meads because I don't love putting fruit into a carboy, like a neck of a carboy, it just doesn't work well. You can also pull stuff out if you were to put stuff in there. The capacity is nice, the three gallons. They might have some other sizes and I'll put them up if they do, but Build quality, functionality, nice fermenter. Things I don't love about it, and it's just the way it works. And when you try to get this thing out, it, I mean, maybe this is intentional, that you, it picks up the stand too. So if I was moving it and I just needed to move the whole thing, I'd just move the stand. That's kind of nice for that respect. But when you're trying to get the whole thing out in the first place, you have to kind of tilt. Not, not a terrible thing. Again, that's a small factor. Um, the price point is also kind of interesting, mainly because I got this through Amazon specifically. I think you could probably get it through your local homebrew shop and not have to pay shipping, but this was like 45, 50 bucks for the fermenter. And then I paid about um, 16 or 17 for shipping. So $60 for this fermenter, it's not bad. I could, I will get some use out of this, quite a bit of use, honestly. Um, but I do feel like that is a little, pricey for what is plastic all the way around. So I'm reviewing this without like, it's not a promotion to them. Um, I've, I have just seen this fermenter around quite a bit and used quite a bit and I know people like it and so I wanted to try it myself. So if you want to pick one of these up, I will put an Amazon affiliate link down below. Again, I'm not, they're not paying me in any way to do this, but if you would like to support the channel and you do like these, the Amazon affiliate link you see in the description um, will give me a small little fraction of what you pay back to me because it's how affiliate links work. Conical fermenters are really cool. This one's pretty nice, I will say. I've used a bunch of them in the past and the size of this is really good for people who are doing smaller batch things. Most of the time when I'm doing five, six gallons, this is not gonna cut it. But if I'm doing like tester batches or you know a three gallon batch, this is definitely usable. I wouldn't use it to age things because I don't like to age my brews in um, plastic when possible, but I would ferment in it and I'd probably leave things in for a while. So easy to clean, nice construction. Go pick one up if you're interested. If you have any questions about it, feel free to ask below and I'll try and answer them. It's pretty self-explanatory in my opinion. If you've done anything with fermenters in general, they're all pretty similar. Conical fermenters are kind of a little bit different, but this does have some nice capabilities. I do wanna note that I haven't really highlighted much about the brew that was made in here because I don't think that's the point of this video. The bigger point we were going for is the fermenter itself. So if you're curious about my brews that I've been making, or this one, which was a pineapple hopped mead, you can check out my channel and I have lots of videos talking about how to make mead specifically. So cheers to you. Cheers from my pineapple mead made in this fermentation vessel. I hope that you'll go check it out. The Brew Demon whole family of products and I'll see you in the future. Cheers. Mm -hmm.